Hey there guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna Sophia if you're new here and I post home decor and DIY content every Sunday. As some of you might know, we recently bought a new house in Ohio and wanted to document the process of making each room slowly but surely start to feel like home by DIYing, thrifting, going to garage sales, and doing a lot of contemporary decorating, I'm going to show you how you can get a high-end look on a budget. The first room makeover I wanted to share with you guys happens to be a nursery, but all of the DIY content in this video is not specific to nursery, so try to keep that in mind. But the bones to this room, it's a blank slate, so it was the perfect room to start. No paint was required. We just kind of went in there and did a lot of decorating. Because we already had a lot of the bigger pieces for her room, like her crib and her chair, this dresser was actually something that I came across a few months ago at the Goodwill for just $32. So of course I put it in my car and I had to make a little trip to the hardware store after ordering these pools off of Amazon. And I decided that the pools were really gonna make this dresser come to life. So this is a little Ikea hack for you guys because sometimes applying hardware to drawers or cabinets can be really challenging. So I'm gonna give you guys a few tips. So you just wanna grab a piece of paper and draw out the face of your cabinet. And if you're a visual person like me, you might just wanna sketch in there kind of what your pool looks like and then measure your drawer or cabinet front both vertically and horizontally. And then after you do that, you're gonna to wanna to measure your drawer pulls or handles where the screws are gonna to need to go and subtract it from those two numbers. One thing that I did find to be extremely helpful once I had my measurements down was I picked up this thing, it's called a line right, and I got it from Lowe's. It was under $10 and I think it just saves so much of your sanity. So once you have your measurements done, it's kind of like foolproof. You kind of attach it to your cabinet or your drawer and you can make a straight line so then that way you know exactly where your screws are going to need to go. Now because my pools were so wide, the holes that are shown here on this template did not fit. Typically if you're using a template like this, one of these combinations of holes will fit and it'll work perfectly. My pools just happen to be a little bit too big so I was not able to use it for that, but I was able to use it for making sure everything was very level and that the screw holes for the drawer pulls were going to be nice and even. So whenever you decide on your drawer pull, make sure that you're buying a drill bit that is appropriate for those screws that are going to be attached to your pull. So for us, I ended up using a four millimeter drill bit and that worked out perfect. So after we got one in, one thing that I like to do, as you can see, I'm cautioning my husband here, just take a minute, make sure that that actually is straight before you drill another hole and kind of solidify that pull on that cabinet. For the styling on top of the dresser, I did want to keep it really simple and I knew I wanted a basket of some kind. So I ended up finding this Moses basket on Facebook Marketplace. She had it listed for 25 and I offered 20 and she took it. Um, it wasn't exactly what I wanted. It was a little too froofy for me, but luckily I was able to remove all of those like ribboning and frilly details just because I wanted to still keep it rather gender neutral and this was still really feminine feeling for me. So I decided to remove all of those pieces, give it a good wash and then place it on top of her dresser. And baskets just like this one can go for hundreds of dollars online, so I was really happy with this purchase. With the Moses basket on this side of the dresser, I knew I needed something for the other side that was to scale and pretty, and I found this one at the Goodwill for just $5.99, and I love the ribbing detail. I love that soft, subtle bit of gold tinge there. I think it's perfect for her room. So I knew I wanted to put a mirror above the dresser and I've had this mirror for so long. I used to have really bohemian taste and that's definitely shifted, but this mirror worked perfectly in her room. And one hack I saw Lone Fox do recently was if you have something that has like two places that you need to hang something from, just put a piece of tape straight across and then make your markings on where you're going to need to drill into the wall. And then after you've made those markings, all you have to do is take the tape off, place it straight across your wall, and then hang up your piece. And it is so much easier to do it this way. So 
So I have been really loving these little vintage stools and my son and I were actually at a thrift store in Ohio and we found this little vintage stool for just $2 and he found this chair and decided to sit down because thrifting is hard. But once you find what you're looking for, it's so worth it. Another thing that I did that I think made a major difference was making sure to hang my curtain rod as well as my curtains almost to ceiling height, maybe like two inches from the ceiling. And these curtains are so beautiful. They're from Target. They're a linen-y texture and they look beautiful in her nursery. Another piece of furniture that I was really hoping to find was a dollhouse, but not like a small, like dinky dollhouse, like more of like a bookcase style of a dollhouse. And I found one on Facebook Marketplace for just $40, but we had problems with this dollhouse. I pretty much had to build this thing back from scratch. So beyond being broken, the roof and the bottom were completely broken. It had a lot of water damage on that particle board. And so I had to fix that and I had never fixed anything like this before. So what I did worked, which is awesome. So now I can share that with you guys. So as you can see, the water damage was pretty severe. So I ended up taking some 220 grit sandpaper and just sanding off all of the pieces that had water damage on them, pretty much flush with the rest of the piece. So after all of that was sanded off, I just took some wood filler and I kind of really like globbed it on there to make sure that all of those sections were gonna be nice and flush. And that way when I go in with my chalk paint, because chalk paint is really thick and does a really good job of covering up imperfections and you don't really need to sand or prime or do any of that stuff when you paint stuff with chalk paint. So I thought this was gonna be a nice option for paint and it really did a nice job of just covering everything up and making it look brand new. So after I've sealed it and I brought it up to her room, I just laid out all of the decor that I've collected over time to style in these shelves. So I obviously know that in a year from now, this is probably gonna look crazy when she's walking and doing all the things, but for right now, she's five months old and I want it to be just pretty for her nursery. So a lot of the decor I found at garage sales or the Dollar Tree or thrift stores, or I've DIY'd them myself. And you guys have seen me DIY some of these things like this little vase here. And then this marble bowl was something I actually saw on TikTok. And all you have to do is take a plastic item, spray paint it, and then place a bucket of water with tape over top of that bucket. And then please be careful, but you're gonna light that on fire and place your painted plastic item over top of it and it gives the coolest like subtle marbling effect and you can do this to however you're liking but i just wanted it to be really subtle and i think it looks so cool And another Dollar Tree DIY was actually these Dollar Tree boxes that I've never shared with you guys. And all you have to do is take some Dollar Tree boxes and wrap them in faux leather tape. It's pretty self-explanatory. You guys have seen me wrap so many different things with leather tape, with contact paper. The only thing that was kind of different with this one was I had to sand off some of the sparkles on the bees there, but otherwise it was really like self-explanatory. My one tip for this is always just make sure that you're cutting at the corners, folding over and keeping everything nice and tight I will make sure that I link this faux leather tape below because it really gives such a good high-end look in the end. And another thing that you guys recently saw me haul was this picture frame that looked really similar to this one from Anthropology, and I think a combination of these items is gonna look really beautiful in these shelves. So what I like to do is just kind of lay it all out, see what the color scheme is looking like, seeing what you can like automatically see is going to fit and what's not, and then kind of eliminate as you go. So I'll just do a quick reel here of me styling these shelves. So I did about halfway through, and then this is kind of the stuff that's been left over so far, but now's a good time to kind of like decide what for sure you know you want on the shelves and eliminate anything that's not gonna go up there, at least not for this setup. So, and now I'm just kind of setting off to the side the things I know I wanna use, like this picture frame that I mentioned earlier or the speckled vase that I found from the Goodwill and this little rattan basket. So this Ikea vase, I mean, I could use it, but I feel like I could find a better place for it that fits that color scheme better, as well as this little jewelry box. I got it for free at a garage sale. It just didn't work this time around. I just set it off to the side. Maybe I'll use it in a different scheme, but not this one. 
So this little basket I actually found at the same thrift store that I found that $2 stool for right by her chair. And this was $3, which is crazy. It was actually more expensive, but I loved it because it was lidded. And I thought this would be the perfect little thing to put some little mementos in here, like her first pacifier or the little anklet that she was wearing when I delivered her. And um, it's just like a way to kind of keep some of my little memories of that day in her room. So I knew I really wanted in the corner, right next to the dollhouse, a large faux tree. And faux trees can be really expensive. And this one is actually from the Studio McGee line. It's normally $170, but I found this one on Facebook Marketplace for just $55. And it fits the space so perfectly. And because this is a nursery and she definitely will need a place to sleep, luckily we were able to use my son's crib and now give that to her and he gets a brand new big boy bed. So I think when you keep the big pieces of furniture neutral, it can grow with you season after season. And because everything else in the room only cost under $300, I did splurge on this piece from Crate and Kids. I chose not to do any artwork above her crib because I felt that the mobile itself was artwork enough. It's so beautiful, it's such good quality, and it looks beautiful in her space. And I hope if nothing else that this video inspires you guys to be resourceful and be economical and you can still get a really high end look without spending thousands of dollars. I hope you guys have a great week and we will see you next time. Bye. Can you say bye?